Hey homies, welcome to your dose of TRT news. Get it? Dose? TRT? Ha ha he he. Okay, moving on. You're probably noticing that I'm doing things in a bit of a different format today. And that's because I want to try to uh, practice my long form content, do longer sort of videos so that it just becomes a bit more natural so that we can do a lot more live streams in future where we can do long re recorded takes, you know, without stopping and cutting and all that type of stuff. So we're going to start practicing that on the channel. I hope you don't mind. So um, for those of you that don't want to watch all this fluff and you want to get just to the juicy parts of the videos, I will split this video into separate, more relevant videos uh, once we're done recording. So I'll upload the full version and then I'll upload uh, the individual edits for each part that we discussed today in this little mini show. So to start off with, uh, I'm going to start off today with TRT Q&A. And today's question comes from Mr. Nice and he says, when is the blood work Paolo? Now, it's not a coincidence that this is the question that I'm answering today because I just happened to have had my blood work done on Thursday. So I uh, had the blood test done. I went in to actually go get blood drawn at the clinic. And surprisingly, the results were already back yesterday and I have them over here. Now, I'm not going to go through uh, the details of the blood test results today because there's a lot going on here. There were actually 50 tests that were done, including all the testosterone panels and that type of thing. And uh, there's some interesting data here and some interesting results. Some are slightly below where they should be. Some are slightly above where they should be. So I don't want to go into it yet. I still have to discuss this with uh, my doctor or with Mike from Balance My Hormones who handles my blood tests. And I just want to see what he says first. But unfortunately, he is away for the next week. So we'll probably only get to these uh, to this blood work once he gets back and then I can have a chat with him to see what's going on. But there's some very interesting stuff here. So you guys should definitely stay tuned for that because I'll, if I don't, I'm gonna try to do a live webinar with Mike where I, where we go through these results together and we discuss, you know, what's going on here and what it all means. But if he's not going to do that, then um, I'll have a chat with him still and then I'll do a separate video where I go over the results with you guys. So stay tuned for that. The blood work is done and the evaluation of the results is coming soon. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was browsing online and I found an interesting article by T Nation or Testosterone Nation. So uh, I don't know if any of you know this, you probably do, but T Nation, I have a bit of a love hate relationship with them. You know, so sometimes they have some good articles and a lot of the time they have weird, contradictory, shitty articles. A lot of it's clickbait. A lot of it's there to try and sell you something, right? Especially all these supplements that they brand, but you can't knock them for, you know, trying to run a business. But I did find an interesting article uh, which I thought was worth sharing because it was one of the few good ones that I actually found for a change. And uh, it's called Four Things You Don't Know About TRT, Testosterone Placement Therapy, Myths, Facts, Science by Chris Colucci. So I just wanted to highlight you know, what this uh, article was all about today and just provide a bit of a summary for you. If you guys like this article, you're welcome to go uh, read the full article on their website. Um, I'll leave a link for that in the description of this video, but I thought I'd just highlight um, what they do cover in this article quickly because it's really good and it alleviates some of the fears about TRT and there's only sort of four points that they go into. So I thought I'd just, you know, summarize them quickly and, and give you guys a, an overview of, of what all is discussed. So there's four points that they've discussed about TRT. Number one, it's not cheating. And I'll put everything up on the screen so that you can read while I read. So the, the first one is it's not cheating. So they say, this is probably the most common and most incorrect presumption people have towards testosterone replacement. An adult male taking doctor prescribed hormone replacement therapy to address a diagnosed medical condition and improve his quality, quality of life is no more cheating than an adult male taking doctor prescribed asthma medication to address a diagnosed medical condition and improve his quality of life. Now, I think you know that makes common sense and I've raised this before in a video I did on the channel a while back where I said TRT is not cheating and I kind of uh, did an analogy where I compared it to getting glasses, right? If, you, if your vision is bad or your vision, you know, you lose your vision slightly and uh, you go to the optometrist and they give you glasses, 
that's not cheating because it's not like they're giving you superhuman x-ray vision you know it allows you to see for miles and miles like superman right it's not like they give you these glasses that have binoculars or telescopes in and you can see for miles all they're doing is correcting your vision so that it goes back to normal to what it's supposed to be normally and that's what trt is like too right it's not like it's giving you you know uh, uh, over and above the natural levels of testosterone that you would normally have. Testosterone replacement therapy just gets you to what every normal person has, right? And within the normal range. So it can't be considered cheating. So it's good to see someone else highlighting that as well. The second thing they said is TRT isn't just about testosterone. They say, believe it or not, it's slightly more complex than get doctor's prescription for testosterone, inject testosterone, live happily ever after. There are things you'll need to know, understand, and monitor every one to three months for as long as you're undergoing treatment, which is basically for life. Now, I'm actually guilty of this, right? For me, TRT should actually be about get prescription, inject testosterone, live happily ever after. But as I'm learning, and as many of you are learning that go on TRT as well, this isn't always the case, right? You've got to have your blood work done. You've got to understand what's going on there. People think you can just inject the testosterone levels, and if your levels get to a certain level, then you're fine. No, there's a whole bunch of other complicated things that, that sort of occur when you start messing with your hormones and trying to get them balanced, right? And so they do cover things like, you know, other sort of uh, hormones and uh, that, that get... Um, that get affected by your TRT treatment, such as free T, total T, estrogen, SHBG or sex hormone binding globulin, FSH, LH, DHT. There's a whole list of these things, as you can see on the screen over there when I put it up. And even I personally don't know about a lot of these things, right? Uh, and, and that is the whole point of doing this channel. Uh, it's because it's a learning experience for all of us. You know, we, we come in, we think we need one thing and then you find out it's a journey that you go through. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of things that are affected and that affect you and your body and your hormones when you go on TRT. So it's important that you are aware of these things and that you learn about them. And as I learn on the channel, so I'm trying to share that information with you as best as I can. Obviously, I am not a doctor, so I don't share any medical advice uh, on this channel, I just give you my sort of opinions, but uh, don't use them as medical advice. Obviously, always talk to your doctor or your endocrinologist when it comes to things like TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, and all that kind of jazz. Okay, the third point that he brings up is th number three, it's not a quick fix, very important. When people think of steroids, they often think of cycles. Use them for a while, then don't use them, or use less for a while, and repeat until swell. But TRT is not steroids, it's medication. A patient with low T doesn't do a TRT cycle any more than a type 1 diabetic does an insulin cycle. It's a treatment taken consistently to address a condition. Low T doesn't get cured, it gets managed. It's not like an infection where you prescribe meds for 10 days and you're off of them as soon as your body is healthier and symptoms have disappeared. It's more along the lines of, for lack of a better analogy, diabetes. You have a medical issue causing problems so you undergo long-term care for that issue long term in the case of trt means forever very important a lot of guys ask you about this on the channel too you know is it forever there are exceptions but usually yes it is so that is why you have to be really careful and make sure that you have a valid case for trt before you go on it because usually once you start you're going to be on it forever it's very difficult to come off if even possible at all Okay, finally, number four, it's not actually as big a deal as most think. Yes, TRT is a significant medical treatment that involves recurring blood tests, fairly frequent injections, and a never-ending fight against potentially serious side effects. But that said, it's actually becoming more and more acceptable in the public eye, and that's a great thing. Hear, hear. Much the same way that lifting weights has become more broadly recognized by mainstream media and the muscle-bound athlete myth is mostly extinct, Men wanting to be hormonally healthy is seen as less of a midlife crisis and more as part of a genuine health issue. So that's the last point in the article. And as you can probably tell, I think they're all really, really good points that he brought up, which is why I wanted to share the article with you guys today. Um, there's a lot, a lot more to it than that. I've just done highlighted the summary in that. So if you want to read the full article, you can get it uh, on their website. And as I said in the beginning of the video, uh, there is a link for this in the description of this video. So 
once again, let me just give you the title of that. It's by T Nation, which I'm sure you all probably have heard about. And the article is called Four Things You Don't Know About TRT, Testosterone Replacement Therapy, Myths, Facts, Science by Chris Colucci. So check it out if that's something that will interest you. Give me a second. Not doing too bad so far. Okay, so we're actually on to the last thing for today, which is a surprise. So, the other day, uh, I was at, at my physical therapist, getting a little niggle sorted out of my body, just so that, you know, prevent injury in future. And uh, we were chatting, and we got on the subject of testosterone replacement therapy. And so he asked me, what, you know, what about testosterone pellets? Have I heard about it? And I was like, <laughs> No, I felt quite embarrassed. And honestly, I'd never heard of testosterone pellets in my life. So I was like, okay, thanks for the suggestion. I'm going to go look it up when I get home. And so that's exactly what I did. So I looked up testosterone pellets when I got home and apparently it is a thing. So, and it's quite a big thing, right? It's actually quite a significant form of TRT. And so I thought, okay, got to look into this. And so I did. And so I'm just going to give you an overview of what uh, testosterone pellets are today, you know, just a, a brief history, you know, who uses them, how it's used and that type of stuff, because I'm sure there may be a lot of other people out there like myself that probably haven't heard about it or don't know too much about testosterone pellets. So basically testosterone pellets were already approved by the FDA around about 1972, but they only got proper uh, you know, they only went into production and got marketed properly around about 2008. And that was by the main brand or the main producer um, and distributor of testosterone pellets called Testopel. They, they were like the main brand that I could find when I looked into this. So I've actually got, I'll, I'll leave a link to their website uh, in the description of this video also, but you can actually see that. And I'll put a picture up here now. They've got a big Testopel website with all the information about it. So, you know, there is a lot of information out there, uh, but let's go get into it. So basically what it is it are, or what they are are small little pellets that they inject into your skin. And these little pellets all contain a little bit of uh, testosterone and that gets released over time. And that, that is usually about three to six months. So to go into a bit more detail, they're, they're tiny little pellets. They're about three to nine millimeters big or long and they contain about 75 milligrams of testosterone, right? And your doctor will usually inject that uh, subcutaneously uh, just under the skin in a, in a fatty area. So that's usually on the hips or in the glutes. Now you might be saying to yourself 75 milligrams, you know, and this has got to last for about three months on average, sometimes even as long as six months. Isn't that a little bit little? Yes, it is. So they don't just use one testosterone pellet uh, usually, right? It's a couples, but the maximum amount that you seem to get in one testosterone pellet is 75 milligrams. So let's say that you've got a dose of 150 milligrams, they'll use two pellets. Or let's say for argument's sake, your, your testosterone dosage that your doctor prescribes is 750 milligrams, they'll actually insert 10 pellets. I don't think they go that high, but just for the point of illustration and the measurements, you get the point, right? So basically what the doctor will do is inject a couple of testosterone pellets, you know, subcutaneously into a fatty spot, and those testosterone pellets will then release the testosterone slowly over a period of three plus months, but three months seems to be the average from what I've found. So your doctor will obviously decide based on your symptoms and how low your testosterone is, what your dosage is going to be, and then allocate the, you know, the amount of testosterone pellets that you're gonna use based on how much testosterone he thinks you're going to need. Now, I've got a little picture over here which I'll put up on the screen also, which basically shows um, how the, the pellet is absorbed, right? So if you look at month one, you'll see in month one, a third of the pellet is absorbed. In month two, a quarter of the pellet is absorbed. And then in month three, a sixth of the pellet is absorbed. And then anything that is kind of left over after that will sort of just get absorbed over the rest of time until the pellets are removed. Now, to go, just to talk about dosage, which, uh, I found a little bit alarming because uh, the dosage seems to be quite low compared to what the rest of us on normal testosterone replacement therapy are, are getting, right? So as you're aware, you get all different forms of 
testosterone replacement therapy. You get the injections, you get the gels, you get the creams and, and a few other sort of ways of administrating it. Now, these pellets is just another form of administrating uh, and dosing TRT. But normally, um, you have a decent dosage, but with these testosterone pellets here, you can see it for the guidelines that they give. It says the dosage guideline for the testosterone pellets for replacement therapy in adult males is 150 milligrams to 450 milligrams subcutaneously every three to six months. Now think about that, right? 150 milligrams for argument's sake over three months, that's, that's like 50 milligrams a month. Even if you had 450 milligrams over three months, that's 150 milligrams a month. Most of us are getting 50 to 150 milligrams over a period of a week or two. So I find that really low. And I guess maybe that's why I probably haven't heard of this as much because all the guys in the TRT community probably uh, realize that this seems to be low dosage and it's a hassle, in my opinion, you know, to go to your doctor, get all those pellets inserted. You know, you've, there, there are like risks with this. You can, there is a risk of infection. There is a risk of these pellets coming out if they're not put in properly. So I guess the reason we don't hear about this as much is because maybe uh, it's just more inconvenient than the other ways of administering testosterone. So I think that's it. Um, I'm gonna put the link for everything up there. There's a really good article I found uh, on testosterone pellets, uh, and this is on PubMed, which is a good uh, resource for, for accurate uh, science, and this is called a review of testosterone pellets in the treatment of hypogonadism, right? And they do a whole breakdown of testosterone pellets, how it's administered, you know, the effects, the results, and that type of thing. Uh, it's worth a read. If you wanna know more about testosterone pellets, then I suggest you read this. And like I said in the beginning, links to all of these articles and everything you'll find in the description of this video and whichever other video this is on. So I hope you guys find this helpful. Uh, we went a lot quicker than I thought today considering this is supposed to be a full show. So let me know what you think of the format. Do you like this long form where we do everything in one video? Do you prefer where I keep the videos separate? I will split this video up into separate videos anyway, but let me know your feedback or what you prefer. Um, and also we're going to do uh, a lot of live streams in future, hopefully. So I'm, I want to set up a live stream at least once every two weeks where we just sit down. It doesn't even have to be related to testosterone replacement therapy. We can talk about other things related to health, fitness, life, even culture and that type of stuff. So uh, let me know what you think about that. And if you like this video, please click like. And don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you can get more updates in future. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon and we are out.